Peso, how you doing? I'm Psycho, welcome to Psycho's Body Shop. This is the purpose and the reason why I built this gym. For what you're about to see when somebody's eight days out or two weeks out or six months out and they need that boost and they need people focusing on them. So if you want this type of uh, attention, focus on you, Psycho's Body Shop is where it's supposed to be. So all these videos that we made, there's very limited people in here, so we want to keep things very intimate so that you learn. You get not only great workouts, but you actually learn how your body works and you're able to take this information home and put it in your arsenal and build the body that you're wanting to achieve. I need you to complete that one, we can go lighter next time, but you have to complete what you started, mm -hmm. even if I make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So by saying someone cannot have certain things, first of all, you, you, you can't, it's just, it's just, you can't say that. Like I can't, you can come and say, I want to be a doctor, Chris. Mm -hmm. I can't say you can't do that, and I want to keep my regular job, and I want to do this. I can't say that. Mm -hmm. I'll say, you, you're going to have to learn how to operate on three hours of sleep for the next 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I cannot say that you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just the opposite of what I'm doing. But sometimes people will make a statement because I can't run the Boston Marathon, Marathon so therefore you can't run the Boston Marathon. Yeah. And that's just what I don't like. You shouldn't state your opinion for actual facts. So mm -hmm. when he said he'll never have lines in his hamstrings ever, like, that's insane. But now, but I take it as this, I'm the kind of person like, you know, in high school, they had the pep rally. Mm -hmm. That's to get you ready for the game. Yeah. That's to get you pumped up. So when people say things like that, I'm not angry. I take it as the pep rally. Okay, the, the uh, demand has been met. Uh, uh, okay, demand has been requested, so I'm, uh, I must apply. So let's, so let's work. Yeah, you know, I also think, too, like, great athletes, even when it's not there, they seek that kind of stuff out. Which one? What part? The, they, they seek out the doubt. The doubt. The yeah. doubt. You know what I mean? Because it's fuel. It's like even Michael Jordan, they would say it was stories where he would actually put words in guys' mouth mm -hmm. so that he can have some motivation during the regular season there you go. to go up against some no-name guy in there Charlotte. It's just go. things that you do. Or, you know, he had his freaking acceptance speech mm -hmm. and he's still talking about not making a high school basketball team. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or Tom or, Brady. Uh, he remembers every quarterback selected before him. Mm -hmm. Or how about Tim Robinson and, and uh, Shaq? Shaq was a young teenager, yeah. he wanted to rob us in, and he kind of snubbed him. Uh -huh. That was his fuel to get to the point where he could actually beat him, and he did in the NBA Finals. Yeah. And then Robinson was like, huh? I don't even remember this story, yeah. but it fueled the fire. So even though I take everything as a benefit, mm -hmm. so I take everything as a benefit, like, you know, I'll whisper in your ear, hey, they're not even uh, thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not even considered in the top five. And I use that. So it's not that I don't like what Fu I said or I'm mm -hmm. not going to use it. I don't like what he said, but I will use it for my benefit. Yeah. It doesn't mean I hate the guy. Yeah. That's just his opinion. Yeah. Let's go. someone disagrees they take it as anger I'm not that type of guy mm -hmm. like when Cormier said he was being racist I didn't take that as being racist because I always I'll say Hispanic or or black or white I'll, I'll use that and sometimes the stereotypes are true you know sometimes they are true but uh you know Cormier lifted extremely heavy had super endurance so I watched it and I don't think it was racist either I think that what people forget what he's saying is the style of training, mm -hmm. not their capability, right? You know, which is totally different. You can be a very strong bodybuilder, 
and just adopt a particular style that suits what you're trying to do. Exactly. So he didn't say that they couldn't do it. Right. He was just basically saying from his observation, a lot of guys utilize this type of training. Right. But he probably, if he had the opportunity to say it all, he'd probably say it now. Right. They could also train with low volume. Right. And still do it. They just decide not to. Yeah. It's not well, that they know, can't. Some people just like the pump. They like that skin bursting pump. Yeah. And, that, and you, like you said, you fall into a particular style of training and you just roll with that. That's just yeah. what That's what I'm saying. But, you know, uh, but I don't say, I don't, I'm always the guy that say, oh, he's being racist. Sometimes. Chinese people like rice. Hispanics like tortillas. I mean, they just, it's not always racist. Black life fried chicken. It's just, it's just something it is, but I'm not hypersensitive like that. So like I watch the show. I like the show. Every mm -hmm. critique that they made of Andrew, mm -hmm. I sat back and analyzed it. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me look at that. Even when they said he needs to bring his arm cool, I said, okay, I said, let me try that. Let me try that in the pose and see like that, see if it works. But it's not always like that. I just don't like, don't get, just, just because I say I don't like what you said, don't get so hypersensitive and say, I'm mad at you. I'm not mad yeah, at yeah, you. Don't be upset. That's what I said. <clears throat> It's just based on, like I said, certain observations. They're not like absolutes, you know what I mean? Like, um, for some odd reason, at least from my observation, um, like a lot of Asian bodybuilders don't have great backs, you know? But it doesn't mean that they can't develop them or they don't. It might be their training, but it's just, just an observation, you know? It just really depends. Same thing with saying, you know, black guys may not have calves. Well, they obviously do. Right. You know, it just depends on the person and how they train them, you know? Right. No, I trained my calves. And I didn't have calves when I started with Larry Rose. There you go. He yeah. was, and Larry was bigger than me. I was just 121 kilos. But I knew switching to bodybuilding, I had to do calves. Right. So, uh, 2021, I set my deadline October to January and I did calves. Every day I was doing calves. 20 reps, 10 sets. Right. Yes, on Christmas Eve, I went to the gym just to do calves. On 31st of December, I went to the gym just to do calves. New Year's Day, I went to the gym just to do calves. And after I got it, I remember my friends were like, like laughing at me. I woke up to the gym, the first thing I do, I go to the calf machine and do calf with my other class. They were laughing at me. At the end of the day, they saw me every month like developing. Good. And after I got them calves, I'm like done. And now they are all like, I mean, I, I sent like some of them my program and the feedback have been amazing. They're sending me the picture like, bro, wow, it's working. Yeah. It's all, I, I don't believe it's, uh, you, like, you can have it. It's, have you tried to? Right, yeah. And, that's, to see, that's, the and that's the point I'm saying. It's like people make observations on things that they're saying, but they don't follow the root of maybe why. You talk about individuals like, who yeah. haven't trained them, like, you know. So the, so the layman's, you know, they said black men don't have cars. Yeah, it's true, but have you tried to put in the work? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did, and it's worked for me, so I'm like, right. yeah, so. so last one. Okay. Machine, this one there, mm, the donkey, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, the donkey one because I could go 
back and forth and that was how I developed here even because I was going yeah. to first straight back and forth. So. One. What's funny about it? It's, it's good. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. So, we're here at the body shop and we're uh, training chess. I'm here with Psycho, Drew. Prince, Carlos, Sergio on the camera. So, about eight days out from the Arnold Classic in Ohio for Andrew. Um, I'm still in the off season. Kind of getting warmed up here. Got a late start to the workout, but um, we did some flies. And now we're on the uh, Star Trek incline press. So I'm kind of going to carry the workout from a verbal standpoint. Just kind of give you guys some of my perspective of the workout and where Drew's at as far as mentally, just from my, my standpoint as a competitor. So we trained um, shoulders and legs over the weekend. And uh, you know, his energy levels were pretty low, but he trained very, very hard. Got everything he needed to get out two weeks out, you know. Um, and now, like I said, this is the week before the show. Next week is peak week. So these are probably the last real hard, you know, workouts. Whereas next week, it's gonna be more manipulation of your nutrients to kind of bring the physique to life on the stage. So um, needless to say, he's, he's fairly depleted, but he's got a little bit more glean in his eye than he did from this weekend. So hopefully that, that shows itself during the workout today. actually trying to preserve as much muscle as possible so it will not atrophy but we can't just like and his body takes a minute to warm up it takes 30 to 40 40 minutes for him to warm so if you try to warm to press the car too fast you may have a problem so we have to let his mind and his muscles connect and then you'll, you'll know you'll see you'll, you'll be ready to go So, about eight days out, man, as a competitor, especially going into these pro shows where you know there's always gonna be a handful of people that has the opportunity to win, it's an emotional roller coaster because you're really, really tired throughout the day, and I find that the only time you actually feel like yourself is during your training because, you know, you're much more susceptible to stimulants, caffeine, and stuff. So you're gonna be fired up even though you may not get the best pump, but you're constantly analyzing things. As those days on the calendar come closer, you know, you're gonna have those moments where, hey, I can see myself holding that trophy. What am I gonna do with this prize money? All that kind of good stuff. You may even think about your speech. Then you're gonna have those moments where you think about, is this part good enough? How's this gonna be? Should I tweak this pose? People do a lot of things during those last, that last week and a half Sometimes those last minute tweaks lead you to success, but a lot of times they actually screw a guy up. If you ever hear guys talk about their contest prep going wrong, it's usually during those last two weeks where they try to get a little bit too cute, and that's when things go a little haywire. They might change how they do a pose or something like that. And I've even known guys to do dramatic changes within the last 72 hours of a show, which eh, I'm not a big fan of, but Part of it is emotion. I'm not gonna say doubt, but I think the other part is your physique is changing so much during the last few weeks that variations in poses may look different. So the way that you present a pose three or four weeks ago may look completely different the week of the show, which may entice you to try to change it. So again, I haven't really spoke to Andrew about where he feels, but I'm just kind of giving you my perspective. Eight weeks out, your mind is 
going 24 seven. You're not sleeping much even when you have the opportunity um, just because you're always doing cardio, you're always training and you're tired. So it's just one of the weirdest things where you're extremely tired, but you actually don't sleep. So um, it's also a fun experience because you can see the finish line, you know? And this is when most of the people, you know, spend time giving you, you know, nice words of affirmation or even giving you some things to motivate you maybe in a negative way. So that's basically it. It's just a bevy of emotions. And, you know, my advice to people during those last eight days is have a good support system and don't get too cute trying to change things. That's when guys typically lose a good prep. It's that last week and a half, oh, I want to do my side chest like this because my obliques are showing now. If you haven't done that for the last three months, I advise you not to try it, but that's just my two cents. Andrew did some light peck flies, a lot of squeezing. He did like maybe 10 sets, all warm-up sets. Now we're gonna go right to the incline. A lot of people wouldn't put free weight on a competitor this close, but his body was built on free weight, so I don't want anything disappearing, especially the upper chest. Uh, so I need to stress the muscle. Make sure he's squeezing. We're not going to go super heavy, but I do want to exhaust the chest. What I, well, how I was brought up when I would train to train with the top pros, it didn't take it took me a few years to realize that I was dictating the pace. So I always like to bring fresh sparring partners in for these guys. They got a lot of carbs, a lot of fat, a lot of fuel in them. So it's not always about the barking and yelling and screaming. Sometimes the person needs to see someone else do it and then they can follow right through that. So that's what Ron is here for us right now. He's just setting the pace, setting the tone and telling Andrew he can gauge himself where he should be in the workout at this point. It's really good for Ron to do it because he's been exactly where Andrew is. He knows everything is like delayed. The strength is still there, but the, the motion or the movement between the set may be a little bit laxed or laid, and that's where Ron can set the uh, tone for that. And I think there's a more mutual respect because Andrew knows Ron knows exactly what he's feeling. Let's go. Yeah, so, because like, just like I was saying about the posing thing, Chris pretty much echoed that with regards to training. You know, if you train a certain particular way and you train heavy and low volume, I wouldn't advise you to become some 30 rep guy, you know, two weeks before the show. But within that, you know, you don't want to go in and feel like you want to set any records because, you know, there is a certain point where you're going to get diminishing returns in the form of injury and everything. So stay in your lane. And again, don't get too cute with things as you get close to a show. I don't know how good the, uh, the audio is on that camera but I'm about 10 feet away and I can hear Andrew's joints clicking there. So he's pretty dry. That's another little phenomenon that happens as you get ready for a show. Your joints, tendons and ligaments, they get very dry as you drop that body fat. So you can actually hear it in Andrew as he's going through, I believe it's coming from his elbow. Uh, hopefully the elbow, not the shoulder, but it's just part of the game, guys. It's a good sign. And I'm sure when he poses and he really squeezes into those poses, you can hear all types of crackling going on in those joints and ligaments. So it's a good sign, but it's also a sign to, again, warm up properly, especially those last four weeks, because you are very lean and you are very tight and you will feel still, still feel strong, but you have to keep in mind, a lot of times your muscles are stronger than your joints. So how you feeling mentally? Eight weeks, I mean eight days out? I'm more excited. Yeah? yeah. 
I'm like the reverse. In the beginning, it's like crazy, but at the end, it's like. Uh, yeah. So you kind of getting up here with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's me. <laughs> One thing, like, I noticed that's completely different from amateurs to pros is that, you know, here a lot of amateurs when they're talking about contest prep and getting close to a show, a lot of them will ex exchange their little food fantasies. Pros, we really don't, don't really have that. Don't get me wrong. We want to enjoy some of the food, but it's not something that we obsess over. I don't know what happens when you cross that stage and become a pro, but it just kind of takes, takes a backseat to what's at hand. Maybe it's the money. Maybe it's the responsibility, I'm not sure, but I've yet to have too many of us actually exchange any stories about what we're thinking about eating after the show. Seven. checks and cashing them later so you know what I'm saying I will uh, forecast what I'm gonna do and then I do it yeah, so I, every round, well, I like that one I like the, I like what we're doing so I'm very proud of it. you know this is mostly his posing partner posing coach yeah he putting him in the ring I love him making him sweat Control the weight, don't let the weight control you. Like a machine. Mm. One. Two. There you go. Three. Chest moves. Four. Chest moves. Five. Uh-huh. Six. Uh-huh. Seven, uh, there you go. eight, nine, uh -huh. ten, uh -huh. one, uh -huh. two, uh -huh. three, uh -huh. four. Three. Good job. Walk right into the flies. Flies. And squeeze. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, five, four. This, because we're eight days out, this is the kind of workout that I see a lot of guys doing in the off season. Now, what we're doing now is basically that we're keeping up pumping the muscle. We are somewhat stressing the muscle. We're not trying to tear it down completely. We just want to keep a nice, keep blood and nitrogen in the muscle so that it doesn't atrophy. 
We're not trying to build new muscle. We're not going, we're not trying to get any PRs. We just want to get it nice and tight. We look at it before the workout and we look at the body after the workout. We're doing a minute plus, maybe two minutes, 10 seconds in between these sets because we have to do fast. That's the reason, because, so he can get a pump. He's not going to get a pump because his carbs are so low. He won't get a pump unless we go fast like this. Good. This is like a depletion workout? No, I don't want to deplete him too much. This is a, if people, if he was behind, I would try to deplete him. He's not behind. So what I'm trying to do is just keep the blood full of muscle so the muscle doesn't get burned for fuel. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. As you can see, Andrew got a team around him. And like most solo athletes, boxing, MMA, so on and so forth, it's usually a camp. And so whether you hear me counting, Carlos counting, us moving weights for him, the goal is to make sure that Andrew has to think about nothing. Just focus on the movement at hand, focus on going out there, get that W. <clears throat> but again, a lot of guys are asking about us counting for him. It's not about that. We want him to focus on exactly what he's doing and not worry about anything else. So I'll keep the count. Got one minute. So when you see Andrew like uh, lean and kind of rest in between sets, that's what exactly what I'm looking for. Now, if he came in here laughing and talking at this point, uh, that would raise an eyebrow. He's not. He feels exactly the way he's supposed to feel. So sometimes it's Andrew and myself in here, we're by where alone, we have the music blasting and we just go for it. But the music off today because this is where his brother Carlos and his brother Prince and myself, we have to pull it through. So I'm not really a brother, I'm more like the person leading the, the, the workouts in here and they seek him for his energy. So it's really important that they need to give him energy. So that's why you hear the loud counting. That's why you hear Carlos standing right by him because at this point, barking at him, it won't work. But actually showing him and doing it with him, that will help. Yes. Five. What that means? Six. What that, mean? that means he's in shape. Seven. That means eight. He's in shape. Nine. Keep the shoulders down. Keep them down. Mm -hmm. That's it. Five. Mm -hmm. Four. Mm -hmm. Three. Uh -huh. Two. Yes. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. 15. Go up 10 over there. So, the approach that I, I do with athletes like this, I don't really, like Andrew and I, we don't talk, like we, we don't have small talk. We have one conversation since he's been here, and that I want to know what he expected from me and what I expected from him. And even in between sets, I'm not saying you can do it or you're the best. I don't really do all that. Andrew knows how he looks. He knows that he's going to look the best he ever looked. He knows what's going to happen as far as his reaction from the crowd. He needs to be mentally prepared for what's about to happen, for all the accolades he's going to get, for all the new friends he's going to get, for, from all the haters that are going to be new friends. He needs to be aware of that and he needs to know how he's going to handle that when it happens. He knows what's going to happen. He knows he's going to blow the stage away and they're going to see things from him that they never saw in six weeks but he needs to be prepared for that. That doesn't change him as a person. So you want 20 ball on? No, it's a right there. Seven. That's it, bunch the chest up, Eight. bunch it up. That's it, bunch Nine. it up. There it is. Ten. That's it, picture the strikes is gonna be in One. the chest. The round is the fullness. There it is. Three. Mm-hmm. Four. Nine. Ten. Nine. Twelve. 13, 14, 15.
We're throwing in some uh, shoulder press, and I'm going to want to keep blood in the front delt. Now, I do believe that the uh, shoulder, the good front delt, is actually an extension of the chest. So when you do the side chest, when you do the rear, uh, the, the, rear uh, the side tricep, that's really important that I, that uh, front delt is nice, straight, and full. So sometimes I will use the front delt. I will work the front delt with the chest for that reason. Another reason. Uh, since he's very low calories, very low carb, uh, the cardio's up, I need to adjust the workout where it's much effective, where I'm not doing a wasted thing just to burn a bunch of calories for no reason because I don't want him to start losing body parts. So sometimes we will do different things. If I think it hasn't been hit in enough days, we need to hit something. So we have a maintenance program. And just from looking at him, I know we need to hit a few more things after this. So it's so just so the body doesn't start giving up muscle that our bites are feeding off a muscle. Yeah. I have to make it. I have to make it where I want atrophy. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing. 
Same thing. Keep the arm bent. Then blow the air out. So I'm looking for all of this and all of that, okay? Front lap. Tricep. Into here. Blow the air out. Squeeze right there. Keep the arm bent. Perfect. Bring it in. That's it. That's it. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. Five. There it is. Six. to touch the calves and we need to touch the uh, front lat and uh, you know we got to do all that to uh, make sure those things are on point so to, so we have about the detail right now so every day he may have the same maintenance, maintenance but every day he has some type of maintenance so today we get the calves the glutes and um, the back lower back Christmas tree all that type of stuff so. Okay, so that concludes a great chest session here at the body shop. Andrew, Chris, Prince, Carlos. Uh, we got 
eight day left eight days left to the Arnold. Uh, I've been training with Drew off and on for about the last four weeks whenever we can touch bases. It's been a great ride for me. Hopefully I help push him in some way. Uh, I know, you know, he definitely motivated me with regards to his journey in bodybuilding. Uh, today was great, even though it was eight weeks out. Um, Drew still has a lot of strength. As he said earlier in the video, he's getting more and more excited by the day, which is good. You really want to be excited. You want to be confident because that's what's going to manifest itself on stage. You know, that's what judges want to see. But again, I'm not going to talk too much. Again, it was just a great workout. Uh, I'll let Andrew tell you his thoughts on the session, what's coming up next week, and any other predictions he might want to bestow upon you. He's been a little tight-lipped so far this year. Uh, just stay tuned. I'll give you guys some entertainment. That's it. Ha, ha, ha.